and welcome to the next lecture part, which is on the more formal problem definition for hyperparameter tuning. So, um, we have already introduced hyperparameters as inputs um, to the training procedure, um, so in which um, an inducing learning algorithm minimizes an empirical risk on a training data set in order to find optimal model parameters theta, which then define our fitted model f hat. And hyperparameter tuning is now the process of finding good, um, a good uh, hyperparameter configuration lambda so um, that this um, empirical risk minimization procedure results in a model with hopefully optimal generalization performance. And this is unfortunately um, kind of a bi-level optimization problem. So we have this well-known risk minimization problem that we are solving um, to find our model f hat. So this is really what we usually mean when we say machine learning uh, training. Uh, um, and this is nested within our outer hyperparameter optimization problem, which um, uh, where some people also call this um, machine learning this direct machine learning uh, training um, task, a second level inner problem usually solved by gradient descent. And this um, outer um, hyperparameter tuning problem is sometimes called the second level or model selection problem. So the, the whole reason um, that this is um, of such a nested structure is that the input of our um, training algorithm i here is not only the training set data, data set d train, it's also this lambda configuration vector that we need to fully specify what i should do. Um, so we are now kind of nesting this inside of an um, outer optimization procedure where we try out different configuration vectors, lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, maybe in a sequential optimization procedure to figure out what the best configuration is. And usually our only way to evaluate how well these lambda configuration uh, vectors work is to run the complete inner training algorithm um, that gives rise to a trained machine learning model, then try this out on some extra new test data, um, evaluate how well a specific configuration works and then um, iterate over that um, until we find a better performing one. Um, so if we formally want to introduce um, how this works on a mathematical uh, level, we um, now specify our hyperparameter configuration space as a cross product of individual um, domains um, for single hyperparameters. So this lambda i here is the domain of the ith hyperparameter. These domains can be continuous, discrete, they can be categorical. Um, usually for practical reasons, the domains of continuous or integer, integer valued hyperparameters are bounded. So something like um, a bounded interval with a lower and an upper um, yeah, boundary. And a vector in this configuration space is um, usually denoted with a lowercase lambda symbol, symbol, which is an element of this capital lambda guy here, which defines the complete feasible set of the optimization problem. And the learning algorithm I now takes a training data set D and a hyperparameter configuration lambda, huh? training set D of size n, and a hyperparameter configuration lambda and returns back an object from our hypothesis space, usually through risk minimization. So D and lambda go in and the inducer returns a fitted model on the data set with um, configuration back to lambda. Um, and we now can formally state this nested hyperparameter tuning problem as minimizing our lambda vector over the generalization error of our induced model on some training data um, when we evaluate 
the generalization performance on some untouched test data. So why is this ne a nested problem? Because this inner thing here, yeah, this training of our machine learning uh, model is already an optimization problem, usually not the black box one, something that we can usually solve with gradient descent. But in order uh, to define this uh, lambda vector here, we have to wrap this around with an outer optimization problem. Um, also note that I've written down the kind of the most simple version here on this slide where I just do simple train and test splitting to measure the generalization error. Um, a more realistic version of the whole thing will actually um, define this for um, more sophisticated resampling strategies like cross-validation, um, but this would make the notation even more um, complicated, uh, so I abstain from this here. And what are the individual components now of this uh, bi-level optimization problem to concretely define this for um, yeah, specific instances? So first of all, there's the data set uh, that we are trying to find our optimal machine learning model on. Then there's the learning algorithm itself. Maybe there's even several competing learning algorithms. Uh, maybe we want to even to tune over the potential model class we are trying there. Um, there's the learning, there's the learner's hyperparameters and their respective regions of interest over which we optimize. Uh, so this is this uh, Carol Lambda guy here. Then there's the performance measure. Um, this is usually determined by the application. Usually we don't have too many restrictions on this. It's also not necessarily identical to the loss function that, def that defines the risk minimization problem for the learner. So why can this be different? So for example, we could um, in our inner um, empirical risk minimization principle, we could minimize something like the log loss, um, the Bernoulli loss for logistic regression model, um, because uh, this is something that's smooth, that's convex, that, can, that we can optimize with gradient-based techniques. But on the outside, we might actually be interested in optimizing for um, the area under the curve, the AOC metric, uh, which is much harder. It's possible to directly optimize this, but usually most software can't do this. Um, but on the outside, because um, we are going to solve this outer problem here, usually through black box optimization, algorithms anyway, we can choose any type of um, performance metric we want, yeah? as long as this makes sense for the application. And then the last component is this resampling procedure that um, we use for splitting up of our data um, that defines our estimation procedure for the predictive performance. So this is what I've written down here with this simple um, train and test split procedure, which in general might be some form of um, cross-validation. Why is tuning actually a pretty difficult computational um, or pretty difficult optimization problem? So first of all, tuning is a der derivative-free problem. This is why we usually call tuning also a black box problem and um, we usually have to resort to black box optimization algorithms to solve it. It's usually impossible to compute derivatives of our objective yeah, because this is, um, for example, the cross-validated performance metric of a learning algorithm with respect to its hyperparameter configurations. Yeah, so this is um, often, often for the general form of this problem, it's impossible to specify anything like um, gradients and so on. Um, and to kind of calculate, calculate them um, in a white box formula type structure, which we would need to um, run gradient-based optimization techniques on this. So very often, the only thing that we can do is to evaluate the performance of a given hyperparameter configuration um, and kind of use its performance value as feedback for our um, tuning, search procedure, uh, but there's no directions, no gradients, and so on. And every evaluation of such a hyperparameter configuration lambda um, requires one or multiple training and test steps of our learning algorithm. So every evaluation can actually be quite expensive. Uh, so this can um, be in the range of seconds, minutes, or even days if we are using a super slow learning algorithm on um, a very, very large data set. Even worse, 
Um, the answer that we get from that evaluation is not exact, but it's um, probabilistic, it's stochastic, because um, in many settings we use cross-validation. The splits of this are random. Uh, they are subject to um, random sampling noise. So this is actually a stochastic optimization problem now. And categorical and dependent hyperparameters aggravate our difficulties here. Uh, the space of hyperparameters we optimize over has uh, often a very complicated non-metric structure. Yeah? So um, many of the optimization techniques that are very efficient, um, that we have understood very well nowadays, often can only deal with um, a cross product of usually continuous real valued uh, parameters and not these mixed categorical hierarchical dependent spaces.